Okay. Give me just a minute. And... Boom. Hello and... Oh. Welcome and thank you for showing up, Carlton. Yes. Thank you for showing up tonight, and those of you watching right now are watching after the fact, so don't forget to like, subscribe, bell icon, the usual hoopla. I'm just going to hold on to him for a second. Tonight, I'm sculpting another character for my Saturday game, and this is going to be a female water genasi warlock. Yes, warlock. Celestial Warlock to begin with. She's a she's a, a sweet girl. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yes. Crazy kit. Yeah. So anyway, tonight we'll be doing. Yet another female spellcaster that I appear to have done several of over the years. Year. Year in a few months. But, you know, hey. Then again, I've also done quite a few uh, male, cast, male spellcasters over the uh, time period involved. Let's leave that as a vague as humanly possible. The time period in... I just put you down on the floor, fuzz bucket. Yes. Insane little fur ball. All right. So really and truly, we're going to wait a few minutes to see it. Now, for waiting for the uh, the person who I'm sculpting for to show up and, and you know, pop into the chat. Meanwhile, just to show you, I got... Uh, Of the figures printed out and what we're doing is we're going to have the regular scale figures you know on the tabletop map etc and as you can see the these two are pretty tall and they're almost the same height with this guy being a little bit taller but a little bit crouched down but in addition to having the, the, the miniatures for the map, we're having miniatures that people will have next to their character sheet. Double-sized. Number one, it's easier to say, oh yeah, that's you and that's you, even if you don't, you know. <clears throat> it's pretty clear, just from the pose, the shape, the silhouette. And on the second, if people want to paint, most of the people in my group are not, you know, experienced painters. Some of them have done painting in the past. But these are a lot easier to paint than these. So, you know, a couple different things. And uh, just to show, you know, I mean, this is the, uh, the Warforged Monk that I printed back on Thursday. Right, I sculpted back on Thursday. And, uh, this is his double-sized version that I'm working on. I just started working on painting him. And hello, Haven. She's here. So, Haven, I was looking at, uh, Google Image Search for Water Tanasi, and I realized they pretty much look like slightly stockier sea elves. You know, the, the whole... E, e, little thin ears, but more of a human build rather than an elven build. Does that sound about right for you?
Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is, uh, okay, I'm going to close this and open up that, and we are going to change now. Bing. Now, again, the, the figure is, is a bit out of proportion. One thing to note is at this point in time, this figure would be about six foot tall. By comparison, both of these figures are about six six. Actually, he's closer to six eight, but you know, thinner and crouched down a bit more. How tall? is your water Ganassi. You want to try and keep these characters in scale with each other, especially since we're having the double-sized figures. Okay, she's 6'3". So, what we can do is we can take this scale and bring it up a little bit until each one of these marks is about a foot in scale. We're going to go to the front view. So, we can then bring her up just a little bit about to there. That will make her 6'3". And, of course, her hair will be thus a bit taller on her head, so the figure will be only a teeny bit smaller than these two. Okay, now, next question. Does she have a weapon? Does she have a prop, uh, whether it's a staff, a dagger, a hammer, any kind of weapon that she would possibly have in her hand so that she wouldn't be mistaken for just a peasant? Or do you want her, like, casting a spell of some kind? Okay, um, next question, um, besides her upper torso, we've, we got that, pa we got that pretty much down on, uh, Facebook. Do you have anything planned for her lower torso? Is she wearing a, a knee length skirt and an, a to the floor dress, something in between layers, you know, layers of clothing? Any preference on that? And also, what hairstyle does she have? Something while quick while waiting on that. Little bit there and you may or may not hear pops outside my window that's yes fourth of July stuff uh, even out those arms make them less muscular knee length loose and flowy okay so that means that she gets the female we're gonna use the long dress robe but we're gonna trim it once we get it on the sculpting area. We're going to hide this. Now, do you have a preference on pose? While I'm sitting here looking up a good staff. Let's see. Um... 
also, we're gonna, that's what we'll do. I'm gonna load the staff. Export it. This is going into new, new folder. Water Warlock. Base staff. Ah, okay. Well, what we're going to do first, we're going to go ahead back over to here. This is 3D Studio Max, and I'm going to import that staff I just exported from the program. Import. Badoom. And, uh oh, that's right. I forgot that it does that. All right, so we're going to select the staff itself. Control I, invert, and delete. Because all we want to mess with is the staff. Okay, we're then going to come over here, select that edge, loop, split. And then we're going to select the knob and vanish it. We're then going to select the edge. And we're going to come here, we're going to chamfer 0.001. Okay, then we're going to select just the edge again. You notice that that suddenly became thinner. And we're going to collapse. Now, there, ring, or not. Okay, let's do it this way. And deselect back here. And then we're going to connect to loop it big there. And then we're going to deselect most of this, but the one in the center is still selected. Well, control backspace, it's not there now. Low. All right, this is our staff's base. We're going to go and take the object color. Let's make it easier to see. We're now going to make the head of the staff. And in order to keep things straight, we're going to go from top over here to bottom. So we're looking at, we're looking at it from what will be facing forward. How about a slightly curvy water drop, a shell, or a lobster claw? Any of those sound good for what's on your staff. Okay, she's a courtier, probably not the lobster claw, but like a shell. And if a shell, anything specific? Like, perhaps open forward, you know, leaning forward and open partially with an orb in the center that's like a pearl. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're actually going to start from the side. We're going to go with the box. We're going to make it here. Make sure it's wide enough that it'll be... Okay. Effect pivot only centered object and convert to edible poly. Now this centers on let's effect pivot centered object. Okay, this is centered at 13.13, .13, so this needs to be centered at 13.13. .13. Okay, now we're going to select here, we're going to connect twice. And then we're going to go ahead and select all of them. And we're going to make them a little bit wider like that. We're also going to then come in here. And we're going to connect only once. Okay, then we're going to select just these. 
make them wider. Pull these. Oh, well, actually, we're going to do that later. We're now going to come out that way. We're going to select here and connect it again just to give us a nice curve for the back end. And one more here, but we're going to connect twice with a little bit of there. Now, connecting here, we're going to connect, bring this to zero difference, and we're going to just do that so we can have plenty of little nodules on the front of our shell. Okay, click there and there, deselect here, extrude out, not that far, not up there. That's going to be huge. I'm going to have to shrink it after I do this. Okay, now. We're going to select here. We're going to bend. And obviously we're going to change the axis. There we go. Collapse all. Then we're going to select here. We're going to bend slightly here. That's this way. Collapse all. And shrink. Come down this way and that way. And now we're going to come from here. We're going to taper symmetry. There we go. And that's going to be only Z. And then we're going to curve it. Okay, collapse all. And then we're going to rotate this camera just so we can see it a little bit better. Obviously, we're going to shrink the head because it's way too big. Now, we're going here. We're going to extrude, but now we are going to extrude by polygon and bring it to about there. Now, we're going to loop, and we're going to chamfer. I'm going to bring it to about there. Okay. Now, we're going to extrude here, 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 and here. And we're going to ring. And then, bam. We're going to extrude out ever so slightly. Not that much. It's about there. Just enough so that it ends up giving us a nice loop. Oh, I see what I forgot to do. I forgot to change it to from polygon to local normal. There we go. 
Now, if we hit Mesh Smooth right now, Okay, we're going to delete that mesh smooth because we I see we have some select here, shrink, control, backspace. Now, mesh smooth one, two, and not enough. I okay now let's mesh smooth it and see how it looks One, two. yeah that's much more shelly okay close it now we're going to move it up about there effect pivot only we're going to move it about there. I'm going to go to there. And bring it down this way. And then I'm going to shrink it because we don't want this to be too big on the staff. And there mesh smooth there we go collapse all now assuming that like that right now it's facing down and we're going to put a sphere in the middle of it and this will also be at 13.13 right there kind of representing a uh, uh, a, 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 a pearl we're going to bring it out a little bit because that's too far there we go kind of representing a pearl um, do you want to have the shell itself if you're holding it to be facing down, facing up, facing straight forward, what would be your preference? Okay, so the shell is open, facing the top. Okay. What we're going to do then is we're going to take this. Well, first we're going to take this. We see that its Z altitude is 15.9. So this one needs to go to 15.9. Okay, and then we're going to rotate this 90 degrees. Sorry, I have I I sometimes miss uh, what I what happens in the chat. 15.9, and then we're going to bring this out. Okay, so here we have the shell and the orb. We can add some deco to the handle later on in sculpting. And hello board, hello Mark. Oh, that's right. I forgot who your patron was. Anyway. So we're going to take all that and we're just going to export it straight out. Export selected. Meshes, free sculpt, broadcast, new, water warlock, wavefront OBJ, base staff. Yes. Export. Done. Delete and then back to Dev Studio. And we can now delete this. We are going to load it again but that's just to all right would her staff be in her left or her right hand is she left-handed or right-handed and 
Would she like use the staff in her left hand and her right to be like gesture like she's casting a spell or vice versa? Or would it be more like, I mean, it's obviously not going to be like the other character where she was going, hi. All right, so this is 2020, 11.6, 9.6, 4.8, 15.6, 16.4. No, what am I doing? Bring that down while well, I'm waiting on the answer. Yeah, 15.9. Staff and left, spell casting with the right. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're first going to content library, load that left hand, uh, staff in the left hand. And we're going to delete it. And now we're going to move this one into the left hand. We're also going to go to poses. Uh, or is it poses or is it in props? Them left hand. Yeah, there we go. Perspective view. Now the reason I moved the center for this is because the angle for it is wrong. Zero Tate 45. There we go. Now, we're going to hide this, just like we hid the dress robe, and we're going to do her pose. Um, yeah. Do you, what sort of pose do you want? Do you want it to be more seductive than what I did for Linguini? Do you want her to be more uh, snooty? Like, you know, kind of pulling herself up and looking down her nose. You know, what sort of, what, what do you want? Because she could be doing, like, you know, or she could be, I'm not going to pretend to be seductive. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Charming or friendly? Okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start with the hips. Rotate them this way and just a little bit back. And then this leg, this leg down that way. And this leg out to the side. Front view to get these feet right. Okay, we need a bit more of the hip.
and control D to drop. Perspective view. Actually, what I'm going to do now that I have these split selected, we're going to pin translation and rotation on these feet. So I can play around with the hip position and get that less, you know. Oh, forgot to do one thing. Lock, oh not the scale, but the uh, z side to side on the thought on the shins, and also, yeah. We're gonna bend back on the chest, off to the side. And then we got to place the, the staff. So we're going to rotate the shoulder, the, the upper arm here. Bend it. Make the hold on just a second. I forgot some. I forgot to do something. File, save as, pose preset. Uh. ZZ temp accept edit figure zero zero figure pose being because I forgot to parent the staff to the hand. Okay, now back to perspective view. Let's parent that to the left hand. There we go. Now, let's just go ahead and unpin all. Enable. All right, disable pins. Now, we select our Chica. We go to content library, poses, and go down to CZ temp. There we go. And we can move this that way. And then that way a little bit. Now we go back to front, front view. And we're gonna pull it up a bit. We can also rotate the wrist side to side, or the forearm side to side. So it's a little bit, you know, so it's on the same area of base as that foot. We're going to pull it in a little bit. Okay. Now we'll go back to perspective. And we're going to rotate the neck a little bit this way. A little bit forward. Rotate the head this way. And no, no, no. Okay, that's a problem. We need to rotate this hand a bit. And pull this form up a bit. Get it a bit more. Front view. Parameters bend. There we go. 
and now we're going to bring this up to about there and then we're going to pose Actually, let's go ahead and rotate the staff just a little bit. This so it's a bit more obvious when you're looking at her from the front that that uh, pearl is there. Okay, now, do you want her casting out or up or flat? Almost like she's using a uh, minor image to show someone what she's talking about, huh? Would that be about, about right? Okay, then I've got the perfect little thing here under props magic. What we're going to simply do is we're going to take the arcane bolt right hand. And then we're going to shrink it on the Y. On, on, well, that would be, that'd be the... Okay, that would be the, the Y scale. Yeah, the Y scale. It's a splash of water that she's shaping. How does that look? Let's see. Oh, there we go. Like she's uh, playing around with a sploosh of water. Okay. A little smaller okay let's uh i will say that making it too much smaller and it won't be very visible on the miniature <clears throat> it'll be easier to see on the uh size large version which, by the way, can double as if someone cast enlarge on you. Bang! You know, here's our uh, barbarian, and bam, they cast enlarge on him. Anyway. I think it would have been funny if you had played somebody who was a warlock to your previous character. Okay. Now, the only other thing is hairstyle. Then we'll get into sculpting. What do you want for your hairstyle? No, to your previous character in Tristan's game, the one that deified.
Like I could see my character, I could see if I brought in a cleric that was a priest of my other character. <sighs> anyway, so what sort of hairstyle? Uh, uh, Carlton. Blech. Crazy kid. Get a lot of this. What are you doing, Fuzzy? Okay, board. Okay. Buzzball? Yes, you. I gotta put you down, Furball, okay? I'm putting you down on the floor. You got that? Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. I know you little furballs love me, but I'm trying to get this done. Go on. Good boy. Okay, that's something that we'll add in after the fact. All right, so what we're going to do now is... This next thing would be expression. And then after that, the base, and we'll get to sculpting. Right now, right now it's a neutral, slightly happy expression. Is there a preference on expression? Okay, so what I'll do is, since I can't really smirk on this figure, what I'll do is I'll close the mouth, and then I'll raise the left eyebrow. Out a little bit just to make it a bit more exaggerated. And then... Z scale. Once again, to kind of pull it out a little bit, make it a bit more exaggerated. And this one will actually go down the other way. Okay, now that's all of our various props except for the last one needed the base. For that, let's kick back to here. Because I have the pictures of the bases on this page. Okay, um, just to show you, you've seen these before. <clears throat> these. But I've got a whole lot of new ones now, too. Here. I've got uh, Ancient Tile, which is what I used on his base. It's like this ruined tile pattern. Uh, cracked earth, gravel, organic, magic circle, which I think you've seen, and then volcanic and kind of marshy. And then we have cobblestone, fine uh, tile like I put on that uh, assassin figure grass, wood planks and rock the rest of those were sci-fi you know, it doesn't make sense for your character to be standing on high tech panels 
or diamond plate or sci-fi grills. Wood planks. Okay, so we got three different terrains going for our uh, characters. You're on wood planks, Robert's on stone, and I'm on ancient tile. So what we do, file, import, bases, base planks. Let me go to the front view. Go here. And what we do is we kind of bring her, bring it down so that she's basically on the planks. Go to right view. <coughs> and sneeze. Now go to perspective view. And right now the planks are at a slight angle. Let's go ahead and rotate them just a little bit more. A bit more of an angle. Okay, and there we have her base. We're now going to hide the base, the dress, the staff, and the arcane bolt. Because it exports by whatever's visible. File, export, WW body, water warlock, not Wonder Woman. File, export, www splash, accept. File, export, www staff, accept. Now, before I get into the clothing, what does she have for her boots? and belt. Meanwhile, bang. I'm gonna import meshes, resculpt, broadcast, new, water warlock, body. Edit. Insert polymesh import dress. Insert polymesh import. Uh, let's go with the splash. Insert polymesh import staff. And then insert polymesh. Import base. Oh, yeah, the sorry. Tall boots. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these, th th this, uh, subdivide this, and then dynamesh it at 768. And we're going to go to move, turn on this, and increase the size. Pull that up over the hip. And then we're going to do something a little bit odd. We're going to give her a bit of a slanted dress. Trim rectangle. Control and shift. 
we go up this way this will bring it just above the just below the knee So how does that look as the dress part? Of course, before wrinkles and wavy bits and things like that. also going to use this move we're going to make this a lot bigger I'm going to grab here I'm going to pull it away from the once again getting that uh, look like okay Gonna f kind of flow in that direction. Okay, now what we're gonna do is let's undo the movement there. We're gonna come, come up and to there. Just a little. Oh, that's way too far. And yeah, there, that'll do it. It's about like that. Okay. Now we go to transparency and go a little bit. Just above the knee. Okay, now I'm going to once again make this a bit bigger. And we're going to grab down here and pull it out once again to give that whole flowy look. Drink here and pull it out. Now, we're going to hide the, uh, everything except for her herself. And one of the things we're going to do, we're going to fix some of the basic geometry issues my base female mesh has. Case in point, in the chest area. Okay, one thing we're going to do, let's drink this, reduce intensity of that to about there. We're going to smooth out here. Because she is going to be wearing something that will provide some form of support. And then using inflate, kind of bring them together here. Bring 
bring this intensity down quite a bit. Going to be rough and kind of root, kind of misshapen at first, but we're going to be kind of fusing it all together. So that's going to end up getting fused together. And that's way too big, way too sticky outy, but we need to do that just long enough. We're going to hide the arms, so we're not going to be messing with them too badly. And hide that hand. Now, move. We're also going to now subdivide it a few times and Dynamesh 768. And now that we've got it Dynamesh, increase that up to there and we're going to blend here and smooth this out. But once again, it looks more like she's wearing something. We're then going to use Damn Standard, which is another a brush I haven't used in a very long time. Add, drop the intensity, and then stroke Lazy Mouse off. We're going to just kind of draw across, kind of create the the wrinkle effect. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add on what will be kind of like the frilly top. It's going to be an off-the-shoulder shirt. I'm assuming that you like that idea, because that was what was on the uh, sample you showed me. So first, we're just going to kind of, well, bring that focal shift down. Draw across. around okay now we're going to masking and we're going to grow 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 sharpen 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 Grow, 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 grow. Sharpen, sharpen, sharpen. And now we go to Subtool. Extract. Accept. Draw. And then we're going to go to Dynamesh at 256 and then we're going to subdivide it a few times and now we're going back to damn standard oh, we're still on damn standard we're going to switch to subtract make it a little bit bigger and we're going to start drawing just a general division on this we're going to turn this into the frills.
and I'm hearing some fireworks outside. What a shock. And then we're going to make it a little bit bigger. We're going to kind of just bring it around this way. Represent that seam up near the top. And now we go to move. We're going to shrink this down to about the size of the larger, uh, the size of the smaller pups. And we're just going to sit here and drag them out. Oh, now I need to make them a bit bigger. Make it a bit more exaggerated on the frilly, puffy side of things. That's too high in the wrong direction. Let's make it more like, let's do it like this. Actually, let's go ahead and hide. Well, go her and then hide her. And we're just gonna sit here and we're gonna grab and drag up for way too much. Drag up for each of these. We want to try and exaggerate our details because they're going to be on a 28 millimeter and a, and a 56 millimeter figure. And bring this around. And there we go. That really has the, that really gives it the look of the top of one of those peasant dresses. Now, do you want poofy sleeves or weird sleeves? Okay, I can move it off the shoulders a bit more. Weird entails, um, what's her name from Final Fantasy X and X2, where it's, she has short sleeves that end like right here, and then sleeves that start here and go poofy. Or do you rather just have like like loose sleeves that are kind of puffy here with a cuff at the elbow? It's not even the third. Really?
Sleeveless, okay. What that will mean is we're going to have to make it clearly obvious there is a, uh, it ends here under the arms. So we're actually going to use the seam tool. If this is a brush that I actually got from Gumroad. It is not a commonly available brush. Now zoom in. Which way does it go? Yeah, that's the way. And then here. There we go. Make it clear that it ends there. Does she have anything on her arms? Just a... Okay, what we're going to do right now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fix her ankles and her knees. I'm going to involve the move brush on the knees. Go to in, inflate Z sub, and we're going to just very carefully deflate around the ankle because that's just too much, too thick. I did the geometry back before I realized what does and does not print well. So the geometry is just a little. And they can see the difference between those two ankles. The puffy sleeves would basically be, I'm going to do it on the, le on the left arm because it would be easier. Come in here. I would then kind of mark off that. I'm going to pull that out a little bit up there. We can actually, yeah. And then smooth this out. Hold on just a second. Let 
going to go ahead and smooth out where it would meet the arm. And then we're going to subdivide it a couple times, delete, lower. We're going to duplicate the body, cancel, duplicate, hide that version, just because what we're doing is a permanent thing. And then we're going to make this come down to here. We're going to come down to here, make this. We're going to select here just to mask it. And then we're going to, whoop. Something like that, but with wrinkles. That's what the puffy sleeves would look like. <clears throat> While I'm thinking about it and waiting on you to respond, I need to go back to move and pull this out from the chest a bit. Whoop, wrong side, here. Because it's just a little... Come here. There we go. Okay. But yeah, that is what the puffy sleeves will look like. And that would then add wrinkles and poofs. Um, not so much, not so much ruffles as wrinkly bits, because it's a lot tighter. It's more like a little spandex rim around where it's meeting the elbow. You now it just contracts and you've got all the wrinkles all over that spandex area or the elastic. Or like what you see on a drawstring bag. The problem with smaller, that doesn't work on miniatures. Let me show you what I mean. That is how it would look on the printed figure. And compare it to that. You see what I'm saying? It's there. It's barely a difference. It's a visible difference, mind you, but it's barely a difference. 
I do need to reduce her wrists. Her wrists are a little large. <clears throat> but I'll do that after I after we decide on puffy sleeves or not. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there just for the sake of Okay, no sleeves. Alright, now what we're gonna do is very simple. We're gonna merge on. We're gonna first of all delete that. And then we're gonna mer drop this down one, and then we're gonna merge down. Always okay. And Dynamesh. Drink the mouse and smooth over where the dress meets. And here too. Now, give me just a second here. I took a sip and that wasn't enough. Okay, we're getting ready to do her belt. Narrow belt, wide belt, what was it you wanted? Let me zoom up here. Small belt with a shell, okay. So we need to go ahead and shrink this mouse down quite, well, let's move to a different brush. Shrink this down quite a bit. And we're going to kind of have it be like hanging low and just off center. And then this is going to come around the small of the back. There we go. And now we're going to extract this. Accept. Draw. Draw. And we have our belt now and we're going to what we're going to do to make the shell is we're going to use this. And we're going to shape it into a shell. Well, first, let me go ahead and move it out a little bit. It's in too deep. And then we're going to extract or split unmasked parts. And we're going to go ahead here and frame in. And then rotate so that it's centered. There we go. Now, geometry. We're going to dynamesh, or we're going to subdivide, then dynamesh it. No, whoa. Not enough. There we go. And we're going to start off with the move topological tool. I'm going to shrink this down. And we're going to bring that focal shift down. do is we're going to grab here we're going to actually run up grab here and pull in and here then we're going to shrink this and very lightly move out here then we're going to sh make it a little bit bigger grab here and drag down and grab here and drag down shrink it down grab here and drag out then subdivide it a little bit 
Delete Lower, and go to that damn standard brush. The damn standard brush! And we're going to kind of draw on a little rim here. And then... Uh, ah, wrong button. Rotate a little bit like this. On, on each side. And then go back up to move topological, bring that focal shift back to zero, grab up here and move down a little bit. And she's got a shell, but we need to make that shell bigger, simply because, you know, it's it's not big enough for actually showing up on the print. So we're gonna to go to scale. Make it bigger like that. Yeah, that will show up. I mean, there, you can see the shell. Got a lot of wrinkling to do, and we got some wrists to, to work on, and we got the boots to make and the hair to make. And we also have to make the ears different. Oh, not like shell. Okay. Let's go ahead and delete this. And once again, we're going to go to there, and we're going to draw on, go ahead and make sure the depth is set to zero, draw on a big old disk that we're going to turn into a Nautilus shell. And split on mass parts, geometry. Divide, 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 delete lower, 512, Dynamesh. Now, what we're going to do, in order to make this a Nautilus mesh, we're going to go ahead and grab the move brush, grab the bottom, drag it down a bit, just a bit. Then we're going to use trim rectangle. We already still, I oh, forgot that, but what we're going to do is we're going to use it to kind of come up this way to get the bottom of the shell. That didn't work. Let's do it from transparency. And we're going to shrink this down because we need to move this in. Okay, then we're going to smooth out this side because we need to round it off. And move it up a bit. And then we're going to subdivide it a couple times. And 
damn standard. And we're going to take it from here. That's actually, we need to make that lazy mouse on, increase it a lot more higher. And we're going to come in. No. Increase that radius. There we go. Frame out. Like that. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't always be checking on the... There is a about a 10 second lag. So it's kind of hard to keep up with what you're wanting me to do. The problem is some things you can't undo, like deleting uh, if you if you delete something, you can't undo it. Rotate it to the right a little. So the point is up. Okay. That can be done. Like that. Okay, we only have half an hour left. I don't think I'm going to be able to finish it tonight. Well, that's how the point is up. What do you mean by the point is up? No, this is your character. You have every right to be picky. I just need to know what you need. I mean, what do you mean by the point is up? If this is not what you wanted, how do you want me to turn it? Okay, now that I can undo. All right, now I do need to go ahead and work on the wrists a little, and it's mostly the side view of the wrists. So we're gonna pull them in this way just a bit and up here just a bit. And then we're gonna bring it in here. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing on up here. Also, while we're at it, we can smooth that out.
there. That makes the wrist a bit a bit more feminine too. Zoom out. Okay. Now I would suggest when we do the hair to have it flowing in this direction. You know, flowing out like to her to her right to the viewer's left. Does that make sense? Also, do you want her face more human, or do you want to keep it kind of the half-elven? Of course, we're going to make her ears kind of thin-like. But even so. Okay, it is 9 o'clock. we still got enough time to at least get the basic geometry for the hair. But before we do the hair, do you want to keep the face as it is, where it almost has an elven, almost elven cast? Or do you want to take it and make it a bit more human-like? Okay. Now, for the more human-like, what we do is using the move tool yet again. We're just going to kind of grab here and pull out a little bit wider cheeks and the lower jaw. Well, we're going to worry about the smirk later. Um, we're going to bring the eyes a hole down. And we give her a little bit bigger, uh, a little wider eyes. And then Move that. Frame out. It'll look a lot better when she has hair. Okay. There's a reason I'm doing this. It's just easier to log to zoom in. Ability hide points now frame. There we go. Now it's centered on the head, and we can draw on where the hair is growing from. And so to do that, do you want a part, or do you want it all kind of? It's going to exaggerate around the eyes. Now, what I was going to try and ask you was, do you want to part in the hair, or is it all just kind of flowy from about the same length like someone who hasn't cut their hair in a few years? Okay. Board. What always looks looks weird when I do it? When I make things vanish? Okay, well, I'm, real quick, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the, uh, <clears throat> um, ears. Let's move here. And here. And then <clears throat> we're going to go to the move, we're going to shift that focal length back that way so we can grab the tip and pull that way pull 
that way and pull that way. It'd be a lot more visible on the large version than on the small. And then we go to orb cracks, G sub, shrink it down. Sharpen, sharpen it here. Then make it larger. And there's her little thin ears but now we got to go back in and do her hair so we're gonna draw just the area of the hair kind of here we're only gonna part it here because of the fact that we're going to have it waving over to the to the uh, one side and then we kind of come around and down deeply down the neck this way And then we're going to extract that. Draw and draw. Geometry. Oh, wrong one. There. Now, that's just where it's, you know, coming off of the mesh. We're going to go to Clay Buildup Tool with the round alpha. And we're going to make sure to turn Auto Masking Back Face Mask on. Make it a good bit bigger. And turn off Lazy Mouse. And we're just going to start off by just building up the bulk for the hair. Because we need to add some mass to it especially off to this side. Okay. And now, let's 
Okay. Now we're just going to grab the move tool. No, not door cracks. A move tool. Get bigger. Grab here and kind of pull off to the side. So, how's that for the hair? Robert's going to add a little bit more bulk down the back. Okay, you want it longer? Okay. Once again, we grab the move. We're just going to make this focal shift to zero, and we're going to make it a lot bigger. Oh, wrong one. There. We're going to grab here and pull down. Then we're going to go back to clay build up and we're going to start building up right in here. Let's make it transparent. Obviously, we're going to have to add locks to that. For example, let's add a little bit more on this side over here. Okay. Just to show what, it, what she looks like now. It's 9.15. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to be able to finish this tonight. But we have the basic shape and the basic geometry. We're going to put right up in here. We're going to go ahead and put a shell that's like a, a, a hair clip. And that's going to be more like one of uh, these kind of shells. How does that sound? Oh, it's okay. Don't worry. This is the third one in a row. I haven't been able to finish in a night because I've been adding too much to it. Mine didn't get finished in a night. Robert's didn't get finished in a night. I literally can finish this in the morning. Okay. Which reminds me, obviously the 28 millimeter scale version is going to be staying here so we can put it on the map as need be.
Do you want me to mail you the six, the fifty four millimeter ver or fifty six millimeter version? Oh, um, I'm not finishing it live. I'm finishing it when I get a chance. The next live show will probably be the next person in the game. Let me go ahead and, uh... But, yeah, so... Thursday will be whoever decides to be next in line. So, uh, I've got a cat staring up at me. All right, come on up, Carlton. No, he's just going to stare at me now. You are a crazy cat. Yeah. Have I spoiled him too much? As he's starting to lay back while I'm giving him belly rubs. I mean, what cat loves belly rubs like this? Huh? What cat does? This cat does. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, little buddy. They're spoiled sweet, is what they are. What do you want? Why are you pulling on my beard? Why are you pulling on my beard? Okay, now you're pushing on my beard. Yeah, look at them claws. Yeah. Look at them claws. And the second it gets near my skin, they go up and then in. So that way he doesn't get me. <laughs> This is a kitty who definitely trusts me. And look at this. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that was an interesting thing I just heard from the living room. Apparently, one of the members of George Washington's spy ring, and the one credited with warning him about Benedict Arnold's betrayal, may have been Benedict Arnold's wife. Anyway, it's 20 after. Got a couple things I need to get done. Real world. And of course, tomorrow is uh, pay the bills day because tomorrow's payday. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get ready to go goodnight. As usual, I'm going to have my hand up here and start count from five to one. When I get to one, I'm going to say something goofy and go, uh, 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 uh. when I see it happen on the screen, I'll know I've caught up to the uh, lag on YouTube and I'll shut down. Oh, excuse me. So, that's going to be five, four, three. Two, one. Wordplay is more than just puns. There's also onomatopoeia, uh, alliteration, and of course rhyme. But puns will always be my favorite. <laughs>